side. Now next. Action. Well, this is the making of um, Pounce. Um, Pounce was was our second feature film after the um, 2010 um, Unwelcome. And as you can see from all the equipment that we've got, we we chucked a lot more money into this production. Um, we went all out to get camera tracks, better cameras, better lights, better studio facilities um, and it does show it's got a much better production value. We also took the dis decision back then in whenever it was 2012-13 to shoot a lot of exteriors as interiors which um, it like depends on how you look at it, it makes it easier or makes it harder. In theory it's supposed to make it easier. You shoot everything inside a studio, you have complete control over the light, the elements. Um, but as you can see from from the the time it takes, because it's obviously a time thing, if you're shooting outside it takes a lot of time to you know find a location, get to a location, set up, set up lights, it's a lot of hard work. But then again if you shoot inside it's like we're setting up green screen, uh, uh, green screen, blue screens. We've got artificial grass. We've got lights. We've got tracks. It's a tough call, really, and it never looks as good indoors. That's that's the other thing. It may be easier. You may have more control. Yeah, and then you've got all the post to do as well. You've got to do all the um, uh, uh, keying out of the blue screen. So, and then you know, putting in smoke and fog and. And then also you, you, you have to go out uh, on location and shoot your backgrounds. <laughs> so, you know, looking back at the time, it was, a, it was a choice that was made to make things easier. I think it actually made things harder and made the film not look as good. But um, I wouldn't do like that much again. And on my next feature, Sniper Corpse, you could see that like every exterior scene of that, I think all bar, just one scene, I think was all shot on location that was all shot outside in the woods at night and you you get the sense and the feel of it you know I sort of learnt my lesson from this uh, from Pounce that like it can be done this way but is it the best way to do it this way you know I think all filmmakers have to make that decision what it all comes down to time because you've never got enough time and also money because you've never got enough money so you have to decide you know okay we're going to shoot indoors we got facilities we got you know it's nice to have a coffee machine on tap you know toilets um but is it going to help the film is it going to make it easier i think all it means is all your actors just sit in the green room pissing about laughing and telling jokes and i'm on location when it's freezing cold they're sort of trying to get things over as quickly as possible you know let's get the first take right let's not piss about and have a joke they'll be laughing you know so it, it's it swings and roundabouts between shooting on location and shooting inside
Right, hold it steady, hold it steady. Is this something wrong with song? As you can see, we had lots of um, creature effects. And, and like practical, and tried to do everything practical. Can you dim that light? We said we, we have to go practical. We didn't realise at the time how expensive that would be Just to go right. practical. Just going a bit closer to the tent, now, John. Closer. To see as it goes closer, because the air touches it, it makes the dark first. Yeah. Um, we found an excellent effects man, Dave Foxley, <laughs> who did the creature design. <laughs> and he did it extremely cheaply and did a really good design. Um, of a puppet and and a sort of creature suit and hands and you know uh, claws and everything. I don't know. This one was. Alright, no, just put your hand on the desk and I'll find a staple gun. <laughs> Funny, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Gosh, you'll turn this way and snarl with it. That's it. Uh, no, but it's better. You're putting the wrong one. You're breaking my neck. Try to open his mouth a bit, shall we snap it a bit? It's not at all. No, no, you're fine. That's it, that, not that, that, open and close. Oh, my head. And then turn the other way. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> And then spin it around and open his mouth. That's oh. it, like that. <laughs> <laughs> do that again, do that again, quicker. That's it. And uh, it. And the animal, this, this sort of movable head had like, um, it could snarl and it could open its jaws and that kind of thing. So we tried to really like utilize that but also come up with difficulties with, with what you can do with with practical effects you know there's only so many things it can do you have to hide things you've got to like, cut away to things and so it was you know just a big learning process in that respect <sighs> Um, but I think ultimately going like the practical way it, it does look different to a film that was done with CGI CGI is really obvious at least like practical you get a sense of something being there uh, and you know like, you get a cool like practical uh, um, sort of puppet thing to play around with it was trial and error f from everything, like on the whole production really, to, to you know, try and attempt something as, as big as this, you know, on such a low budget, but you have to to try and outdo yourself all the time, you know, don't just think, oh, I can do that, do that simple little idea, let's try, like, if we're going to fail, let's fail big, let's go all out, let's try and make something, you know, like, grand, and if it fails, at least you've, you've, you've reached for the sky, you know, you've not just gone, oh, we'll just keep it simple and just do this and that, let's make something that's really big, that's over our heads, let's, let's, I think you learn so much more. Go on in, get it going. That's it. Sam rolling. Yep. Hey, hey. <laughs> Scene 60, take 7. Thank you. And action cut in. Laura? Marty, are you that? Again, yeah. I think yeah, filmmaking is just a constantly learning process and um, and like every film you make you just learn so much more you learn about the performances of the actors Action. how to work with actors how to work with effects um, 
so it is just just one big learning process and we learned so much from this i mean like the studios we were using for this were weren't exactly suitable for what we was doing in terms of sound and lighting as you can see we we probably spent more time kitting out these sort of um, studio spaces to accommodate us than we did actually shooting them it's not like we turned up to a professional really expensive studio and it was all ready we had to make everything ourselves work we, we were blacking out windows we were um, sort of bringing all our own lighting equipment um, and camera rigs and everything we had to set up for hours before we actually got one shot done and then like I said because you're shooting indoors the actors get bored they're waiting around they're messing about everyone's tired before you even get the first shot done um, everyone's just constantly drinking coffee and just waiting and then something falls you know you've, you've taped up something over a window and it falls off and you you know then you've got stuff like that to keep doing um, but we got through it as you can see we got some good shots for a film that's that's 99% shot entirely in, in indoors I think we did quite well with it we got some good camera movements we had a good uh, camera track had a great camera um, operator uh, Toby Wilson and a couple of good other um, uh, camera operators, uh, Ryan and and Lewis Beden, they did a great job. Uh, not only shooting this, shooting second unit, and also shooting this this documentary footage as well. Uh, but getting back to Toby, Toby was was really hands on with his camera work. He did great um, um, tracking shots. Uh, he knew every angle that I wanted. Uh, and was seemingly able to get it, which was really good. He had a good eye, uh, and also was good with lighting. I mean, the lighting was a bit of a mixture of myself and Toby just sort of coming to whatever we needed. I mean, if you're shooting in the studio indoors against the green screen, your lighting is very limited because you've got to spend half of your lighting on the green screen to get that just right. And then you're, yeah, plus we, I mean, look, you can see we're, we're cramped for space. There's no space. And if, you, if the camera moved like an inch either side, left or right, you'd see, you know, a studio background or a classroom or whatever we was filming in. It literally was, it ha everything was in that frame. And then everything outside, there was like gaffer tape and, and blue screen and chairs and stuff just, just lying around. It was extremely difficult to shoot which we didn't really anticipate because you don't when you're thinking about stuff like that you think oh this is going to be easy you just you know we'll just stick a green screen there and stick a tent over there and then you think you know when you actually get there and you, and your time limit i mean i think we shot a lot of evenings on this and had like three or four hours which is not long enough to set up and break down action don't move don't look around just slowly put the gun down there's people trapped down there! Just lower the gun slowly and then we'll talk. They haven't got much time! There's something down there with them! Don't move! Don't look around. Just slowly put the gun on the floor. There's people trapped down there! So getting back to the effects here, we had um, some major effect sequences that we planned for this film. As always, very difficult. Um, to set up uh, storyboarding is essential also you know talking to your effects people about what it can do how it's going to look is very important before you start shooting because obviously you know it takes so long to shoot scenes like this um, so planning is the key there if you're doing anything like this you, you have to know plus also special effects man I'm not going to take anything away from uh, they, it always takes ten times longer than than what they tell you it will. We had 
the scene here of, of Lucy being um, attacked by the invisible Silverhide and the effect was supposed to be like a split thing on her neck that was supposed to open up uh, the effects uh, didn't really work well on this scene uh, I don't know what the guy did but it didn't work and we were trying for hours to get it to work we did get something happen eventually uh, but it was a lot of hard work it was difficult it was very difficult obviously this was was the first film I'd done with with big effects like this our last film had had like one effect in it I think before this you know this had the creature we had fake necks and, uh, and fake limbs and arms being bitten off necks being ripped open and also shooting against the blue screen is difficult if you've got blood spurting out as well that was something we didn't anticipate okay give me five minutes yeah yeah uh, <laughs> But you eventually get something come up. Um, and this was the, you know, the whole essence of this film like, was to make something that had uh, some some uh, you know cool effects to it. Um, I don't think it's got enough in it to be perfectly honest. Uh, because we've run out of money, as always the case, and some of the effects didn't work properly, we had to sort of blag our way through the post production on some of these effects. As I mean, like most films are a compromise. Well, in, fact, in fact, every film is a compromise. Um, and this one especially, it's a compromise on money. Because, yeah, you know, these types of special effects are so expensive. Um, if you don't get it right the first time, that's it. You think, oh, how can we get this to work in post, you know? Um, but as you can see, we, we had a great team of people. Uh, everyone... I think everyone takes credit. There was a lot of like uh, uh, runners and just people just helping out on this production who were um, college students who just wanted to learn the filmmaking process and they were working really hard. Just about got enough to, you know, to come through. It, I think the effects took longer than, than anything else in the film. Uh, and there is, I think, hours and hours of this uh, sort of behind-the-scenes footage of just people just waiting around, waiting for the effect to get ready, and and then it was like it was like a firework display when we were filming, because you know after that three hours of waiting, it'd be like it's ready, and everyone would, you know, you know people would come from all over the place who hadn't been there, you know, it's, so there's like about fifty people standing around like, oh, what's this? Let's watch the effect go off. <laughs> Which obviously puts more pressure on you, your cameraman, and your actors, and everything as well. So, but you know, we we put a lot of hard work into this film to try and get something that would be, you know, interesting and uh, and you know, tell a good story as as best we could. Uh, as it's you know, like I said, time and money is very difficult, but but the the intentions behind everything we may not have always have succeeded in our intentions of what we wanted the film to come out to be uh, but that's the case with every film but our intentions behind it all were sincere 
uh, we, yeah. we were trying to make yeah. something so that we could, you, you know, like, like thinner. you know, <laughs> hopefully be something that's interesting for people to watch, something right. different, something slightly different, albeit from a, you know, low budget grindhouse, trashy film, so which are the kind of films that I like to watch myself. Um, you know, sort of yeah. like straight out the pages of a, of an 80s fanzine. Uh, so, you know, we we soldiered on and um, uh, and just you know, as you do, you find your way through it. And uh, yeah, so so until the next time, you know, keep filmmaking. You know, keep um, going out there and doing what you want to do. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Stop.